Hi, Kit. Uh, can you please introduce yourself and tell me what you do at Optical Systems Design? Okay, so I am Kit Chong and I'm the president of Optical System Design. We are an optical software and engineering service company, a provider of the Synopsis Lens Design Software that was created by Don Dewey about 50 years ago. So Synopsis Lens Design Software runs on a very fast optimization algorithm uh, that is called a pseudo-secondary derivative algorithm that Don invented several decades ago. This algorithm is much faster than the standard optimization algorithm some other uh, optical design software has been using. So optimization actually now is the heart to modern optical design software. And so now if you have a fast optimization engine, then there are a lot of things that you can do that the others cannot do with a slower algorithm. For example, you can do global search Effective, effectively and get good results in a reasonable time. Theoretically, a slower optimization algorithm can also do global search too, but it will take much longer. Um, so it's not just not a good solution to the global search if your uh, optimization engine is slow. So it's like, do you want to drive a Mercedes to San Diego or do you want to bike? Unless you really are very into biking, then you don't want to do that. So uh, the choice is obvious that you want a, for a fast optimization algorithm uh, to do this kind of global search. So Don, with his insight on optics and his knowledge in computational algorithms, he has been a pioneer in implementing automatic design search tools into synopsis. For example, the ultra uh, wide angle field uh, land system that you are seeing at my background actually was designed using synopsis by a graduate student who was working for me uh, part-time. And he didn't have any uh, prior experience in designing this kind of system. And this system actually the full field of view is 240 degrees. So it is not a simple system, but he, I told him, you know, there is a customer who is trying to find out if Synopsis can do that. I said, why don't you give it a try? And then, so he started working on it. And within, I think it's about a few days, he gave this system to me. And that is the power of automatic design search tool they can do for you. So if you are interested that you can just check out this the video that we are going to post at our website or our YouTube channel, that is the Optical System Design LLC. So basically that's what we do. We give you uh, a powerful tool, uh, optical software design tool, uh, optical site software tool uh, for you to do your optical design fast and effectively. Great, and thank you. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm just gonna give a little bit of background for our, our viewers that um, the process of optimization is basically you take your starting idea, right? And you allow it to change. Um, and the more variables, the more, uh, you know, performance metrics or whatever it is that you need to hit makes it really complex. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that takes kind of the longest and is um, the most iterative process during optical design is obviously the optimization is what you're talking about. And so the fact that you've created a solution that, um, you know, does does kind of like search all over for possible solutions that you're calling global um, is, is really, it's really beneficial to the industry to have fast tools like that, um, um, that are really uh, um, kind of allow you to, to make those quick changes. Uh, I'm just yes, trying to get so, some context. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, optimization is a very important process in getting a good design. Uh, but actually before that, uh, how do you find that starting point? It's also not easy uh, because I mean, 
you know, for, for a bigger company or you are already a very experienced optical designer, you may have some your own repository and then you can say, okay, now I can just go back to this design and then I can change some parameter to satisfy the specification that I want to have a different F number. And then, then you can do the optimization. So those we consider it as local optimization because you already start with a design that is very real close to the uh, optimization. But for global optimization, it's really like me, I, you know, or a graduate student who doesn't really have a lot of experience. And then one day someone come in and say, hey, can you design this, uh, this land system for me? And it's just 240 degrees in full field of view, no big deal, yeah, get it for me. Uh, but so then if you are in that position and then you don't have that repository to go to, and that is where the automatic design search tool comes in. So basically you go from with that point and then you just tell the system, okay, now I want to decide this with this field of view and then with this F number. Then it works, it, it, it creates some candidates for you. And so, and that is actually, uh, it's beyond what you said and uh, not just doing the local optimization, but it's doing the global search first and then getting to that uh, local value in the main function and then you do the optimization to drive it into a better system. Great, thank yeah, you. I mean, yeah, we, we have a video. I mean, if yeah, you have we'll time, definitely, um, yeah, we'll definitely have a link. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a bit about um, what kind of markets do you touch um, as a software <laughs> provider? Well, I mean, so in the optics industry, so anyone who needs to design an imaging system will need to use some kind of optical design software similar to our product, right? So when I say imaging system, actually, I'm talking about it in a very general sense. I mean, it's not just what you would think about like cameras, but it can be an imaging system that you send to, you, you, you will launch with satellites and go up to the orbit around the world and then to monitor the impact of climate change to the world. Or it can be the Hubble telescope that is still zooming through the space many nine years away to bring us those stunning images of our galaxy. Or it can be the small endoscope that your doctor will you know, send it into your stomach to see whether you have an ulcer here or there and then give you some prescription or drugs. Or it can just be the cell phone camera that you use every day to take pictures of the beautiful sunset or the smile of the baby on the baby's face. And it can also be an IR sensor that a robot is, a robot is equipped with to explore some very dangerous environments like the, war, the battlefield, and then they can see what a human eye cannot see, or they can, you can use it to deactivate a bomb. And so, so uh, all the machine, the machine vision that you, know, you installed in different factories to pick out the bad products, so then we can get the good stuff uh, by online shopping. So imaging system or optical products at this point actually at our age is very pervasive in our society and to our daily lives. And our software is the enabling force behind all these diverse products and technologies that are continu continuously improving our daily lives. That's, so that's so great. What we are touching. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, that's we've had um, you know all sorts of answers, but you know we've talked to people who've done components, we've talked to people who've done systems, yeah. and it's really cool to see all the different markets that everyone is involved in. Um, so I'm going to kind of change directions now, and I'm going to ask, um, what brought optical systems design to Tucson? What was the draw oh. of Tucson? Okay, so it's natural for me because. Um, I came to Tucson to get my graduate degree uh, at the Optical Sciences Center. And so after graduation, I got a job uh, here in Tucson, so I stay here. And then um, in 2019, I decided to, you know, um, 
try my own luck and I look at it as kind of like my bucket list. <laughs> decided to launch this company. And of course, you know, doing it in Tucson is wonderful if you are an optics company. I mean, you have the optical sciences, sciences center there. And then, uh, you know, I can go to the seminar and then I can, you know, talk to the professors, see, hey, I, you know, can we talk about this or I can hire, um, graduate students from the Art Sciences Center. They are wonderful. Uh, they have you know, very good training in optics and they have that can-do attitude. Uh, and I really love you know, that resources that it's just, you know, it's so easy for me to, to tap into. And of course we have other companies, optics company around, and and I actually have been working with some other companies uh, in town, and then kind of like we are helping each other. So so I like that uh, that small community. I mean, Tucson is a great place. It's a small big town, and then the commute time is wonderful. I mean, imagine that you are in LA or Cupertino. And I would rather spend my time working on optics instead of behind the wheel in bus in the highway. So I think there are a lot of good things about Tucson and especially the optics uh, community. And of course, I mean, uh, becoming uh, a member to the Optics Rally, I really appreciate uh, what you guys are doing for us. I mean, it really, um, we, we don't yet have the uh, venture capital structure uh, that people are talking about in uh, San Jose or uh, the, the Bay Area. But so the existence of the optics value is really important to me. Uh, that kind of support, especially, you know, being a small and new company. Uh, I, re I remember how many times I, I emailed Jack is like, um, I, need this, but who can I talk to? Can you kind of let me know? And you know, he, he, he emailed me back right away. And that kind of support, you know, is important uh, for a small company. I really, really appreciate that. Absolutely. So, and like you said, there's definitely that, you know, um, spirit of innovation coming out of the U of A. We've, we've heard a lot yes. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. So, um, I'm going to ask one more question from me. Um, how do you see the work that you do um, affecting the future? Now, you've already touched on, you know, being able to um, create all sorts of systems to really help affect, affect you know, technology as it stands now. Um, you know, let's, let's go one step further. How do you see that affecting um, the future as we interact with our world or the future of optics? Um. So, so in a bigger sense, uh, sometimes I look at this, uh, the development in the, in optics. I would, sometimes I would like to make this analogy as, uh, the, the development in electronics 20 years ago. I mean, at the time, electronics is something really, really like maybe not 20, maybe 30 years ago. Uh, it was something very new and not a lot of people can afford it. I mean, you know, you buy a, 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 a hi-fi and then that will cost you like two or three months salary. But then now it's like, yeah, I can just go to Walmart and get one for my for my little sister. And if she doesn't like it, she throws it away, no big deal. And I do see that optics actually is going through this phase. I mean, before, when you want to buy a good camera, it's like, oh, I cannot afford it. But then now you can do, you can, you can get it. And, you know, the Apple is the top nine, or if you, just, you don't want to spend that much money, you know, a few hundred bucks, you can get a camera that you can use it every day. So I see that the optics industry actually will become that purer in our daily life. And same as electronics, how we, how it improves our life without we knowing it, it will be the same for, for uh, optics and photonics. And I think we are really at this very exciting time for, for optics and photonics because there are 
Yeah, well, one can say that uh, the optical design actually is coming to a mature phase using the existing technology. But then, so now you have this metal material and all this newer technology. And even, you know, just looking at the h bricks and the free form, those are the things that, you know, the theory exists 20 or 30 years ago, but we don't have the machine to make it. But then now you can make it and then you can bring it in. And then I think very quickly, you know, the free form now is kind of like exotic. But once you get into the mass market, then it will bring down the cost and everyone will benefit. And I envision you will get to me like uh, better optics to improve uh, vision for senior people. And then, you know, that is a direct impact to our our daily life, the quality of life. And then of course, in the bigger picture, you know, you can go into the space and then you can have, you know, even better IR sensor or higher resolution uh, images, like what we just saw, you know, with the black hole and all that, you know, and it's just opening up all the, the boundaries that we thought we were confined in. But, you know, slowly without, actually without noticing it, we are already stepping into different direction and expanding it. I, I see the expansion actually, it goes in many different directions. It's like not just in one direction and many different things are happening. And also now for us, because we are the pioneer in integrating numerical method algorithm in optical design, then, you know, looking at what is happening now with the AI, the deep learning, and then you have multi-core, and then you had GPU, and then you had cloud computation. You know, there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, one thing that I am interested in is bringing in deep learning into optical design because optical design is complex. And a lot of time, you know, some people will say that it's a black magic. You need to be a master that you can, you can see things that other people cannot see. That is because that you have that knowledge that you store in your brain. But if we can just train the computer, we just throw them whatever system. You know, that's what our software does. We create, you know, do this global search and we create some 10 candidates. And sometimes one of these candidates will be even better than, you know, what you can design following the uh, convention or the traditional uh, protocol. Because that protocol is limited by how you think and how you are taught. But then with computer, you just need a computer to do things. Even you may say that it's dumb because you see that that is a dead end. But the computer is like, I don't care. I have nothing else to do. You tell me to do that, I do that. But then eventually, if you learn enough with the dumb things, you can come up with better rules. And so that is how I see that. Um, there's so many things uh, that can be done with all this new technology that are fitting into each other because the optics industry, industry actually is also fitting into the, you know, the computational science, you know, making better computers, you know, better, uh, you know, powerful computer system that we can use. So I do see that it is an exciting time and then everything can work together and then we can expand into a better space. That's, That's how great. I see it. Thank you yeah. so much, Kit. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to us.